tenacity, ambition, purpose. Here, it's not just what we do, it's how we do it. This week on UB Football Insider with Lance Leipold, Coach sits down to help us preview the big game against the undefeated and hard-running Army Black Knights. You'll meet the Bulls' California tackling machine, and we'll go around the MAC on another big weekend for Mid-American Conference football. That plus the game day experience, all just ahead on UB Football Insider. Jordan Johnson at the 45 at the 50, got a blocker at the 40, at the 30, there he goes, at the 20, at the 10, it's a Buffalo touchdown. One, two, one, two, one, two. And we welcome in UB head coach Lance Leipold to this week's edition of UB Football Insider. Nice little buzz going into this game, Lance. Uh, getting your team back at home is always important, but getting an Army team that has been one of the stories of college football so far. 3-0 and for them for the first time since 1996. Are you feeling a little bit of the excitement about this one? Well, it will be a big challenge for us, Paul, and it's good to be back home for this. And, uh, you know, as you alluded to there, uh, Coach Munkin and his staff and program are off to a great start and uh, and doing an excellent job. They uh, they had uh, they struggled last year at two and ten, but a lot of those losses were by seven points or less. And what they've been able to do is kind of take that next step to go from close losses to not even close wins right. to big wins, coming off a 66-14 victory last weekend at UTEP. Well, I think uh, in year three of a program and close losses, sometimes you're just waiting for that win that kind of propels you into into some good things. And I, I think Army was able to do that with an opening win at, at Temple on the road and uh, beating a, a you know one of the surprise teams of college football a year ago in Temple. Well, when you talk about Army and you, you talk about the way they run their program, they're unusual in that they are not part of the trend of college football and running the spread and throwing the ball on four wide receivers. They have stuck with that spread, that triple option offense that goes back to the days of Doc Blanchard and Glenn right. Davis and all those guys, Pete Dawkins, all the great Heisman Trophy winners. It's unusual, and that probably is the biggest challenge for you and your guys is that you just don't see it very often. It's hard right. to stop when you're not really used to it. Right, when you don't get a lot of preparation time for it and you don't see it you don't get as much film maybe that that you study and analyze what other people do to to combat it um, you know, it, it poses a big challenge. And when you look at all three service academies and, at the FBS level and they all use the triple option and they all run it very well. Well, they're running it so well that Army is number two in the country in rushing, 367 yards per game. They have not turned the ball over in three games, which is amazing for the intricacy of the way they run it. And they feature in their fullback, Andy Davidson, the 16th leading rusher in the nation. He seems to be the guy that triggers every play. So talk about the role of the fullback and the role of your guys in stopping the fullback. Well, you need to stop the fullback first and, and take take that away. But again, it all, it all trickles down then, you know, between quarterback and then pitch and everything is assignments on football with great pad level and making sure that we have people in the proper position and the first thing you've got to do is try to slow down that fullback and if he doesn't get the ball then he usually becomes a blocker or he's got two or three guys tackling him and, and then something else is happening but uh, it'll be again it'll be a big challenge for our defense and, and one that I know that uh, we're excited for. I mentioned to you briefly, you just don't have the time in a game week to really spend as much time to it. So what I know you've spent some other time in getting ready for it, but how do you try to figure out the best use of your time in a game week to get your guys ready? Well, again, you're dealing with a 20 hour work week and three hours is the game by NCAA rules and the other times that you have. And, and with the long travel this week, uh, uh, we, we have a lot of things that we're trying to work for, work, work through. But at the same time, we, we did try to take some time in, in fall 
fall camp and and tried introducing some things uh, during our our bye week in the second week we spent two days um, I'm looking at some things in there so um, we've gotten some time we, we had some things to get introduced and and then again uh, we'll find out here tonight the best combat for your team to stop Army's offense may be your offense, keeping them off the field. So talk a little bit about what you want to try to see the next step from your offense and the challenges that are presented by Army's defense. Well, you got to be able to control the clock yourself a little bit, keep them off the field. Um, you know, some teams, I think uh, in their UTEP game, uh, UTEP's offense ran 42 plays, and that's not very many. And uh, so it shows the excellent job they did in, in, you know, controlling the ball, clock management, long drives, all those things. And again, as you're on the field with your defense a lot, you can wear down. So it will be very important for our offense to, to sustain drives a lot better than we have. And, and we need to be better in executing. And, and again, we need to go back to having some of those 12-plus play drives and, and hopefully, uh, you know, kind of put a pressure on them to, uh, to kind of answer scores. And to wrap up our first segment here of UB Football Insider, it's kind of a sad irony that both of these teams have dealt with the loss of a player this year. Just a couple of weeks ago, the starting cornerback for Army was killed in a car accident. So their, their pain is a little more immediate. Of course, your guys are dealing still with the loss of Solomon Jackson. And you said that one of the, the, the most impressive teams in reaching out to find out how they could help you guys deal with Solomon's loss was this Army team. Tell everybody about yeah, that. Yeah, that was very nice. And Coach Munkin and, and his players, uh, whether it be through emails, an autographed football for, for the family, just things that kind of reach out to show their condolences. And, uh, and again, we, we've tried to do the same, and it's very unfortunate that, that anyone uh, loses a, a teammate, especially young men at these young age like this. And uh, probably has a little special meaning for, for tonight's matchup. All right, this has been our town BMW game preview as we get you ready for a kickoff between the Bulls and the Army Black Knights. We've got more to talk about when we come back here on UB Football Insider. A key guy in stopping the Army offense is going to be Bulls middle linebacker Khalil Hodge. We'll introduce you to him when we return right after this. Celebrate one Buffalo Day at UB Stadium on October 8th when the Bulls host MAC rival Kent State for their annual homecoming game. Fans be sure to arrive early for Stampede Square and a tailgate concert by legendary rocker Eddie Money. It's a fun-filled day the whole family is sure to enjoy. Kickoff is at 3.30 p.m., but the excitement starts at 12.30. For tickets, call 877-UB-THERE or visit ubbulls.com. It's football, tailgating, live music, and a day celebrating one Buffalo. This segment of UB Football Insider with Lance Leipold is brought to you by CEFQ. For all your banking, insurance, and investment needs, visit your local branch or go to CEFQ.com. Welcome back to UB Football Insider. My name is Paul Peck. If the Bulls want to slow down the hard-charging Army Black Knights, which feature the nation's number two rushing attack, they're going to need a big game from their defensive line and an even bigger game from middle linebacker Khalil Hodge. Now, Khalil is coming off a big game as he led the Bulls with a career-high 17 tackles against Nevada. He wears number four. Let's meet him in this week's CEFQ Player Profile. Khalil Hodge, I'm a sophomore. I play linebacker on the UB football team. As a little kid, actually, my dad used to put me in little Halloween costumes, little football stuff, and have me run around the field until I was allowed to play. So my family is definitely a football playing background. So my dad got me into it as soon as I could, you know, walk, basically. A lot of my cousins played football. I actually had a couple of my cousins go to the league. Jamar Julian, he went to San Jose State, um, ended up with the Raiders, played with the Chiefs for a little bit. And my uh, cousin, Alan Chapman, he was at Kansas State not too long ago, actually and play with the Colts for a little bit. I went to St. Mary's in Stockton. My senior year, I just really like, just that summer, I just remember working out with my dad, just like really just honing in on everything. I was just trying to make as many plays as possible every game. So out of high school, I, I went to uh, JUCO. Uh, I went to San Francisco City uh, with Coach Jimmy Collins, first year guy. I got the chance to go to City and then get to leave in a semester. We won a championship there which was exciting, you know, you don't do that every day. That, that was a great choice. I feel like I made the right decision. Coach Simpson had came up to the school, I got called out of class and kind of got to talking to him and we kind of built a relationship. Um, Coach Leopold, they both came to my house a few times and I felt like they really, you know, wanted what's best for me. They felt, I felt like they um, definitely respected my game and they wanted me to come to UB. Khalil Mack, Raider guy, I'm actually a huge Raider fan, so I knew about him coming out of UB. 
And um, that was actually a big, big push uh, that really that really made me really consider UB as a school. So that was definitely intriguing. First of all, Khalil, he comes from a very successful program in terms of a junior college. He had a lot of success in high school. So he's able to pick up the things that we're trying to uh, get him to understand. And then he's got the athleticism to be able to get things executed. Uh, so I only see that growing and in, in, in his role and in, in what he can do for us in our program uh, expanding as he matures as a player. As a linebacker, I'm a, I'm a real physical, hard-nosed guy, stop the run, you know, take real pride in that. Just a leader, someone who can who can rally the troops, you know what I mean? You know, get everybody behind me and really get going. All the greats, Ray Lewis, Patrick Willis, they're very vocal guys, very, you know, big leaders on the team. I feel like to play Mike, that's what you have to be. Because you're making the calls, telling people where to go, they have to be able to trust you. Coach Simpson, I, I like him a lot because he's he's all about like the little things, you know what I mean? So we'll, we'll practice one day, you think you make a good play, and then you go watch the film, that little step that could have made it a little better, Coach Simpson's gonna, you know, let you know what you did or did not do. I feel like those little things is what's gonna make, you know, you be a MAC champion sooner rather than later. Well, he's an interesting kid, Khalil Hodge. Tell us a little bit about the story about how he winds up coming from all the way in San Francisco and Stockton, California to here in Buffalo. We were very fortunate to have Khalil in the program, and it was just as we started uh, probably midway through the season. Uh, you really, we, we started close by and kept working our way across the country in, in the junior college ranks. And when we found that Khalil was a high school qualifier and he had three years of eligibility, it really piqued our interest and kind of jumped to the top of the list. And, and Coach Simpson, Chris Simpson, went and hopped on a plane got out there and and, and started to, to you know the the visits and the dialogue we were able to get Khalil on campus with his father and they fell in love with the place and uh, and we were able to, to get him here in January you ever heard about a high school linebacker that had 262 tackles his senior year no I had not and that was pretty impressive you know and the thing was in in junior college he played more of an outside linebacker and they used him in other ways but uh, you know he's come in he's fit in really well into our scheme but even more importantly he fit in so well with our our locker room and our players and he's emerging as a young leader in our program well he fit very well in the scheme against Nevada he was the Bulls leading tackler with 17 tackles and that's a, a giant number obviously what did you see from Khalil in that game his second game that that is encouraging to you about him starting to fit in better well he's feeling you know comfortable just just comfortable playing in our scheme around the surroundings of his teammates. But, you know, that was about as close as he can be playing at home. And he had a lot of family and friends at the game. I'm sure he was motivated and excited to do well, and he did. The downside was we were probably on the field a little bit more than we wanted to that, that you know, kind of led to some of those tackles. But, again, for, for him to be his first year with three years of eligibility, uh, again, a very bright future for him. All right. Well, obviously we're talking an awful lot, as we did in our first segment, uh, as part of the downtown BMW game preview about figuring out a way to stop the triple option of Army, Khalil Hodge as your middle linebacker may have as critical a role in that as anybody. So talk a little bit about what your expectations are for him in making sure that fullback isn't running up the middle of the field. We're going to put a lot on his plate and, uh, you know, between recognizing formations and, and different alignments and things like that. And of course, and then he's going to have to get off blocks and he's going to have guys, you know, trying to, you know, cut his legs out and do things, take things over. It, it comes in a lot of different angles when, when you're playing a middle linebacker against an option team, and uh, there'll be a lot on his plate, but uh, I know he's up for the challenge. Army really wants to give the ball to that fullback almost every time, so to prevent them from doing that, is Khalil the guy well, that they made he, use those decisions with? Well, he'll, he'll be one of the guys that, you know, in, in different plays are reading off different people, but, uh, you know, his movements are going to be a big part of, you know, the, the so-called chess match between him and that quarterback whether it's a give or a keep and doing different things and uh, again we're going to need Khalil to play well. Um, what's the next step for your defense? Uh, it, maybe they have not lived up to your expectations through the first two weeks. What's the next step for a, a relatively veteran group of which Khalil is part of? Well, you know, we just haven't created any turnovers yet, and now we're playing a team who's doing an excellent job of uh, in ball security, and they haven't turned the ball over. So we, we've got to start creating some turnovers. Uh, the other thing, I don't know if it's going to really show and be measurable in this game, but uh, you know, our pass rush isn't quite where we thought it would be at this time and be able to get to the quarterback, especially with four guys 
guys. So, you know, those are some areas of improvement. Uh, just a little disappointed in how we tackled out in Nevada, and, and we, we need to improve on that, or otherwise it'll be a long day. All right, so it's the Bulls and the Army Black Knights. That comes up on Saturday. It's a 7 o'clock kickoff here at UB Stadium. Gates open to Stampede Square at 4. David Nail takes the concert stage at 5. And, of course, kickoff with the Bulls and the Red Hot Black Knights comes up at 7 o'clock. Lance, thank you for your time. Good luck this weekend, thank as always. Thank you very much. When we come back on UB Football Insider with Lance Lipo, we'll go around the MAC. It was another good week for the conference. We'll highlight some of the Red Hot teams as the Bulls get closer to MAC play. That is coming up next right here on UB Football Insider. Celebrate one Buffalo Day at UB Stadium on October 8th when the Bulls host MAC rival Kent State for their annual homecoming game. Fans be sure to arrive early for Stampede Square and a tailgate concert by legendary rocker Eddie Money. It's a fun-filled day the whole family is sure to enjoy. Kickoff is at 3.30 p.m., but the excitement starts at 12.30. For tickets, call 877-UB-THERE or visit ubbulls.com. It's football, tailgating, live music, and a day celebrating one Buffalo. Support the new Football Excellence Fund and help build a strong foundation for years to come. Go above and beyond by investing in the future of UB football today. Log on to BullsBlueAndWhite.com for more information and a list of Football Excellence Fund benefits. Welcome back to UB Football Insider with Lance Leipold. It's now time to take a look around the Mid-American Conference and check in on how some of the Bulls conference rivals fared this past week. We start with the Western Michigan Broncos, who had another big weekend against a Power 5 opponent. They defeated the Big Ten's Fighting Illini of Illinois 34-10 and improved to 3-0 on the season. The Bulls will be in Kalamazoo on November 19th to take on the Broncos at Waldo Stadium. Kent State came away with their first victory of the season, a 27-7 win over Mammoth. Quarterback Milik Mitchell led the way with two touchdown passes and 77 yards rushing. The Bulls host the Golden Flashes on October 8th as part of homecoming weekend. That kickoff is 3.30. And the Akron Zips bounce back from a week two loss, putting on an offensive show in a 65-38 win over Marshall. Zips quarterback Thomas Woodson threw for 379 yards and four touchdowns. The Bulls will host the Akron Zips in Thursday night Maction. That's October 27th. The kickoff is 7.30. Of course, kickoff tonight for the Bulls and the Army Black Knights is 7 o'clock here at UB Stadium. Stampede Square gets rocking at 4. David Nail takes the concert stage at 5 o'clock. So if you're coming tonight, make sure you get here early because you want to be a part of the game day experience. Yeah! Just love it. It's a perfect day. Absolutely gorgeous. Here we are ready to make some noise and have a good game. Go Bulls! It's a great place to be, a lot of fun out here in the sun, enjoy some good music, bring the kids out, let them run around, and uh, get ready to cheer on the Bulls towards a victory. We know a lot of people here too, like the, the whole UB community comes out and supports the team, and it's gonna be a good one. I feel like it's the pride of Buffalo, so it's a good time. We were just at the concert over there, it was awesome. There's a lot of families and everything. You know, it's always good, you know, when I'm not, you know, in season that much or playing games to come out here and support the football team. Definitely hanging out with the people that you see every day. You know, they there whether you lose or not. So, you know, it's always good to come out here and hang out with them. The students are coming out, the families are coming out, people are coming out to just enjoy a beautiful day here in Buffalo. Come out, enjoy some football, enjoy the university, and support our local team.
celebrate one Buffalo Day at UB Stadium on October 8th when the Bulls host MAC rival Kent State for their annual homecoming game. Fans, be sure to arrive early for Stampede Square and a tailgate concert by legendary rocker Eddie Money. It's a fun-filled day the whole family is sure to enjoy. Kickoff is at 3.30 p.m., but the excitement starts at 12.30. For tickets, call 877-UB-THERE or visit ubbulls.com. It's football, tailgating, live music, and a day celebrating one Buffalo. Bulls fans, it's time to check out UBHornsUp.com, UB Athletics' official crowdfunding website. Help our student athletes and coaches achieve their goals. Together, we can do great things. Go to UBHornsUp.com to learn more on how you can have a direct impact. Tenacity, ambition, purpose. Here, it's not just what we do, it's how we do it. Welcome back to UB Football Insider with Lance Leipold. My name is Paul Peck. The action gets started later today. 4 o'clock is when Stampede Square opens. 5 o'clock is when David Nail takes the concert stage. 7 o'clock is kickoff between the Bulls and the undefeated Army Black Knights. But first, let's take a look back at our Karuba collisions of the game from last weekend's Bulls trip to Reno, Nevada. Here are this week's Karuba collisions. First and 10 for the Wolfpack from the 18. Butler again up the middle. This time the Bulls are ready for him. And a nice job by Joe Keels, the senior from Kenosha, Wisconsin, and the fifth year graduate transfer from the University of Nebraska makes a nice tackle. That will be a one yard loss. Here's second down and 10. Hand off to the running back. That's Butler again. And this time the Bulls are ready for him. Nicely done by Justin Brandon, knifing in from D tackle to bring him down on first contact. Contact. Go to ubbulls.com now to vote for your favorite Karuba Collision of the Week. Well, as Coach said, it's always more fun when college football has the service academies playing well, and tonight you get your chance to see one of them live. The undefeated Army Black Knights are here. Make sure you're here at UB Stadium. Stampede Square opens up at 4. David Nail takes the concert stage at 5, and then it's kickoff between the Bulls and the Black Knights. 7 o'clock tonight on what should be a nice night for football here in Western New York. Thanks for watching this week's edition of UB Football Insider.